Hello everyone, welcome to the Rugby League lunch hour here at loverugbyleague.com. Sorry we we're, were 10 minutes late, we just had a few technical gremlins. I'm James Gordon, I'm joined by Drew Derbyshire as always. Um, a lot to talk about, we'll talk about Catalan Warrington and all the shenanigans of last week. We'll talk about um, some news relating to TV coverage of Toronto Wolfpack. We'll bring you the latest signing news and bits and bobs that are being thrown at us from various parts of the office as well. Um, we'll talk about last week's games and we'll also we'll look ahead to this weekend, um, which we tend to do in the last 15 minutes. So um, before that, we'll talk about what's been going on this week. We'll talk about what's on the site. Um, Afternoon, Jason. He says, "Afternoon, fellas." It, let's start. Let's before we get into signings and whatnot, because there's plenty to talk about there. Let's go back to uh, to last to last week and and the Catalan Warrington um, shenanigans, shall we say, both on and on and off the pitch. Um, the, it, it wasn't a well. I mean, it's hard to, <laughs> to say, but uh, the Twitter was a what I. Let me let me. I'll put my thoughts on the line go on, first. Go on. So obviously, I'm not. I'm not blaming one or the other. You know, obviously, no one really knows the full story. And regardless of that, it was bad for both teams and on the, both on the pitch and off the pitch. I think what was most disappointing for me was the number of Warrington fans almost jumping to the defence of their fans, saying, "Well, they retaliated to what mm. Catalan fans are doing." Which, if that's what happened, that's fine. But I think regardless of who started it. It was still bad from both, and I don't think a retaliation should be used as a defence to what we're seeing. I've seen some people say, oh, what would you do if you know, if a bottle was thrown at your six-year-old child? And I was like, well, I probably wouldn't stay there and try and climb up into the hospitality. I'd probably try and take me, me kid and, and get out of there, do you know what I mean? Um, but an ugly scene, really, for rugby league, and, and one that we haven't really seen you know, a great deal of in recent times. I don't, I don't, I don't know, I think we have seen them sorts of scenes quite a lot. Not not as bad as that. I think that was probably one of the worst rugby uh, off field rugby league scenes that we've seen uh, in the last in the last ten years or so. Um, but I think I, I, this image about it was being a family game. We've touched on it a few times in the office this week, James. And I, I just don't think rugby league is a family game. I don't I don't think any sports a family game because um, it's the the competitive nature of sport. A family game is. An egg and spoon race in year four at primary school school. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, but, but I, I think in regards to the 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 on field incidents where it started fighting and scrapping, I'm okay with that because tensions are bound to boil over. It's a it's a top top flight rugby league game. Tensions are bound to to boil over at times, but when it's in the stand, that's unacceptable. I'm not having the the on field fighting. Uh, cause the off field uh, mm. brawl because that's we've seen we've seen fights happen on the rugby league field before and and nothing's like that happen like, happen like that in the stand but off field off there are a few off off field issues we've seen uh, in Magic Weekend in recent years we've seen fans fight between themselves uh, when it when it was in uh, Saint James's Park in Newcastle we've seen yeah. fans start fighting we've seen vi- videos go viral where there's not as many stewards at games in rugby league because. Of this family game, where whereas if you go to a football game, oh, like, football is ridiculous. Yeah, for for example, Foot, like, football is football is by is yeah. is over is yeah. overdone. The clubs have to pay for the police yeah. presence. I, 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 I was at Wigan Cardiff, which there's no rivalry there. That Wigan Cardiff on Saturday opening game of the championship, opening round of the championship. Sorry, and the amount of shoes you can you can you can see the fluorescent jackets yeah, yeah, every yeah, single yeah. Where, everywhere in the stand you can see the police I've, in I've, each corner I've of the stand. been to like division in, four football games where they've had police horses police yeah. dogs loads of police and it's like i think the thing for me for the family game image is that yeah rugby league's good for the family and the family do go but it's no more of a family game than any other sport in my opinion you know there's a lot of there's a yeah. lots of examples of football clubs who do very good stuff with, with yeah. families and I think I think you're right in terms of it. We need to, you know. I saw a lot of people say, "Oh well, rugby league tries to market itself as its family game." Does it? I mean, yeah. the other thing you got to consider. The, the, is, the only thing about the family game issue is when that stupid thing, the stupid message comes on the side. <laughs> rugby league is a family game, and, that, and then everyone goes, "Wave, wave, <laughs> off, you." <yeah." laughs> The so I mean, are... I mean there, are, there are more and more incidents. You are right in terms of, of what happens. I mean, I, you know, I've experienced a few. You know, obviously we had 
the Witness Cup semi final yeah, a few yeah, years ago. Course, yeah. I've been in the away end at, at Warrington where stewards have been knocking yeah. five bell, seven bells out of fans, and you know it's not pretty. You, you, they, you know there, there was a few bits of Salford and Huddersfield wasn't yeah, there a few yeah. years ago. Um, it's, it's, and uh, I think it was last year or it might have been the year before we were going to say it, uh, where fighting started outside the ground and. I mm. think a, a young lad I, I go to hospital after the game or something. So it's this sort of off-field incident. It's nothing new in rugby league, but it's it's nothing new in sports either, isn't it? We, we always see um, off-field incidents occur and take the headline because Catalan should have got the headlines for that game because they was far better than Warrington. Well, I mean, I, 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 I did tweet this that um, Warrington have now lost five of their last seven yeah. Super League games, and in some ways, it's probably lucky. If, well, it, it's good. Well, not good, but you know what I mean. The the fact that all this is dis- distracted from that because if that had been a normal game yeah. and it finished normally, we'd have been looking for. Well, hang on, everyone's been talking about yeah. Warrington being grand final contenders, but they've lost five of the last seven and, games. And they've received injury balls to obviously my key player Blake Costin, yeah. who could potentially miss the the Challenge Cup final at Wembley. Uh, Co captain Jack Hughes played over the ruptured testicle. Uh, balls of steel, that bar, balls of steel, oh, no. and uh, obviously Josh Charles still on the sidelines as well. So there's three injuries mm. to key players uh, in that Warrington lineup. So it's it's not looking good for the Wolves at the minute. And obviously they welcomed Saint Helens on Thursday night, and they've rested quite a few players uh, from last Saturday's game in Perpignan, and they're obviously going to give a couple of young lads a go. Well. I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll move on to looking ahead we're, to this weekend a bit later on, but one. We've, we've, uh, uh, we're, we're getting quite a few comments in. Lewis Bank says, as a, as a Warrington fan, I agree, retaliating is not the answer. The lack of stadium security and poor design of corporate box location, etc., didn't help the situation. At any UK ground, this would have been nipped in the bud way before it got to the yeah, stage of I, almost I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Because, I think, because it's, it is, it is, I think Cat, the thing with Catalan is, I mean, I mean, two thoughts on that. That hospitality box has been there for 10 plus years, hasn't it? And this hasn't happened before. But I must admit, I've, I've been to Catalan and I've sat, I've sat in that away end at, at Catalan and it does get a bit raucous at times and you can sort of see why tensions would boil over at some point. And I think he's bang on. It wouldn't happen over here. Yeah, um, obviously Warrington are appealing uh, for information um, regarding any of the off-field issues. Um, so if, if you've got anything... Then uh, get in touch with the, with the Warrington Club on social what media. What about Kenny Edwards? I know, I know, I, I, was he waving or, or goring the, the supporters? It could possibly be said, but well, I mean, he, he he's got he's got form, hasn't he? You know what I mean? Throwing the ball in the crowd and stuff, yeah. and he's got he has got form. Yeah. I think you know we'll move, we'll talk we'll move on to the referee. You know, we'll, James we'll, Child. Touch on the disciplinary as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I was going to go through. James Child, in my opinion. You can't blame him for what's gone on. He's got to manage the game to the best of his ability. There's 26 blokes out on the field. If it all boils over, what is he meant to do? You know, yeah. it, it, I, I actually feel, I feel so. I was saying to Lucy in the office before, I actually feel sorry for James Child a little bit because what, what was he supposed to do in that yeah, situation? I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing, me or you or any, any other sports in rugby league, any other follower, any other referee. Could have done it in that situation. He tried to manage it to the best of his ability, and when when, the, when tensions boil on on and off the field at the same time, yeah, there is not that, much. He, he's, all, he's only one man. Yeah, you're in, and, 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 and I think isn't it? It, in some ways it's very disappointing the lack of disciplinary action against players after that game because you know you look at Jake Mamo for instance got Simbin twice. He got Simbin twenty seconds from the end, and yet he has no no case I, I, to answer. I, I think that should be changed a little bit. You, two yellows should be in the red, shouldn't it? What's you, should, a, you should be. Well, able I to mean, get what's the point? In, what's the point of him being Simbin with twenty seconds to go? There's no point. I know, but I, he, I in just... theory, he should. In theory, Mamo, next game he plays, he should have to sit on the bench for the first nine minutes. <laughs> you know, to make up for that Simbin. Uh, we've got a couple more comments. David Taylor says players must respect the referee. Uh, right or wrong, uh, she or he is usually physically small. If the players fail in this aspect, the game will die. Well, that's the other thing. If there's no referees, there's no game. Yeah, yeah. And and I, and I said this this week. Looking at James Child, I wouldn't be surprised if he quits refereeing. Because why would anyone, why would any any human being put themselves through the amount of grief that he gets? 
you know, he's been dropped down to championship now. You know, he has done a few championship games recently, so it's you know. We've but, seen, we've but, seen but, it in the NRL last season seen, with um, Matt Chetchin. Yeah, and we've seen, and, and, away from the you know, game but think about how many referees have walked away from the game in recent years, and it's no coincidence that it's the increased scrutiny, it's the increased criticism, and okay. You know, no one's perfect. The, the game's faster than it's ever been. The rules are as intricate as they've ever, as they've ever been. Something's got to change to stop the drain of referees. You know, we were talking, mm. uh, I think Gary Schofield mentioned about Caitlin Beaver's referee in a, a, an amateur game at the weekend. And he was saying in five or six years she'll be in a, she might be a Super League ref. She could be a Super League ref in two or three years because the problem you've got is the more refs that are quitting, you're literally just left with, you know, look at the number of refs in Super League now who are rookie referees because... You know, over the last few years we've lost who? You lost Silverwood, you lost Bentham, you lost Tim Roby, you lost Joe Cobb, you know. Um I, I used to be I used to be a, a referee for in football and it, and it was just Sunday League matches at anything from under eights to under sixteens and like I, even even on some occasions I had play uh, players' his parents enter the field to, yeah, I to don't approach see what, me. Why and I, and, and I, I was only fourteen at the time, fourteen, yeah. fifteen at the time and I had I had players' parents because a player was down injured and and obviously the game had to play on. I had players' parents actually into the field and it approached me in in a, not an aggressive manner but um, yeah they they approached me on the field while the game was still was still happening so uh, yeah it's 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 not good. I just think people should think about their actions. But don't get me wrong, referees can be criticised just like a player's performance can be criticised. Yeah. But, but there's but, got but, to be a line. Yeah, yeah. there's got to be a line. We're, we're, not, we're, not, have... we're not saying you've got to say nothing about yeah. the referees at all. Yeah, it can be criticised, just like a player because, can be criticised for an error. Because from but, my point of view, you look at the players, the players are earning considerably more money mm. than, the, than the referee. You know, and it's like, if they, they've they got to be responsible for their actions at some point. I think if, if, if any of you have, uh, if any of you get the chance to, to listen to one of Ian Smith's talks at State of Mind or the Offload Programme, I very much recommend it. Ian Smith. So former Super League referee Ian Smith talks about his experiences as a referee, the abuse he used to get, you know, from, from walking back to his car after a game and, and even when he's getting out of his car at a game, people saying, oh, bloody hell, it's him refereeing and, you know, that sort of thing. And, it, you know, you don't think, you don't think, like, these referees, they're human as well yeah. and really, really affects their lives yeah. when they're doing that. And like I say, ultimately, if everyone shies away from being a referee, the game I, I, I was saying to you uh, yesterday, or I think it might have been on Monday, but what? Why would you be a referee? Well, why would you want to be a professional referee? There's no, because there's no financial. Re- there's not a. You know, okay, yeah, they do get paid, but it's not. It's not financially rewarding yeah. enough. To and that's the thing. I you know I think I tweeted this actually. I said you know you're almost getting to the point where the only way you can have referees is if you pay them marquee salaries <laughs> because you know otherwise why would anyone do it? I'll be a referee if they pay me marquee salary, <laughs> um, but. Why, why would you be a referee? Because when you when you do a good job, no one says you've yeah. done a good job. Yeah. Everyone just gets on with life, goes all yeah. go all after the game and, and nothing's said. But when you do a bad job, they let you know about it and, and then it gets to the point where if it's a big game then they end up saying I can't uh, it, I, calling him all sorts, even sending different, different I can't different remember the exact figure and I'll try and dig this out. I'm sure it's something like Ian Smith said. Referees are asked over eighty minutes are asked to make something like four and a half thousand judgments when you consider offside to play yeah. the balls and you know and all that and you just like you wow. know what I mean? Yeah, uh, we've got you know, we've got quite a few comments coming in, James. Um, so thank you very much for your comments. Keep them coming. Uh, Don Spark says we take our four year old granddaughter to Saints matches, but wouldn't take her to a football game. Uh, but this is this is the type of thing we need to be cautious of now. We we need to make sure that. They keep bringing the, yeah, the young people into the game. I, I think they need. I, I think to they the need point to, where they think I, I honestly can't take. They certainly need. I certainly the think kids. there needs to be a bit more fam, almost like segregation in some ways between family and non-family uh, stands. Wakefield have signed Adam Tangata on loan as well. Keegan Hurst has gone the other way to Halifax. Uh, Michelle Bell says that there is no respect for referees no more. It's a, it's a joke that the players from years ago used to be scared of the referees. Um, I think that's when obviously when, when the likes of Steve Ganson I tell uh, you what, I, 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 and Steve Ganson had, had plenty of respect didn't he uh, yeah from, but he's still got players. grief as well but uh, one referee Nigel Owens the rugby union referee he's a guy he, the guy who got, he gets loads of respect yeah. in rugby union just from the way he is and I think that's the that's the other thing is is there a lesson to be learned Not I'm not criticising the referees in this way but it's almost like do they need to do they need to almost like come up with a persona 
of how how they do it. You know, mm. sometimes you get the impression sometimes that maybe they're too pally with the players sometimes, rather than there's no authority. Um, I don't know what you would do about that, but um, I, think, I think I think Roberts is probably one of the best in our game at, at being the elite professional, isn't he? Yeah, he doesn't take any. I, 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 have, I have no clients with Robert Hicks, no clients with Ben Fahler, really. Yeah. Um, um, I think both of those are, are fairly solid. Uh, Jason Pilmore also has referees need to be as stern as union refs. Uh, as you've just mentioned, yeah. you take no crap. I think I can say crap, can't I? Um, <laughs> yeah, you said it now, yeah. Said well, it twice. Um, <laughs> Chris Clarker was at Hull FC versus Wigan, and the amount of parents shouting things in, in front of their kids is uh, shocking, really. Yeah, I um, mean... I'm, I'm, my honest opinion, I, I've got, I'm not really bothered about swear like people swearing at games. Yeah, but you can understand why people when, would be. But like the, another thing that gets me, another thing that gets me I think is, is getting drenched. Right. Is getting drenched in beer. That's another thing that gets me. Is people throwing beer. So that's like, that's because you don't drink. I stand there trying to, <laughs> trying to catch it all. No, but it's like Free if you're beer. if you're in an away end with your two kids or whatever, what you don't need is some idiots at the back throwing throwing beer. Or do you know what I mean? And it's like, what, do, what? Throw, you mean, people, he's thro- throwing it up, not yeah, th- yeah, 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 throwing yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah, Because what gets me is people moan about the prices of like tickets and prices of beer, but then they'll throw a bloody pint away when there's a try, and you're just like, come on, man. Uh, Jason says, if the refs did their job instead of listening to the RFL on how to run the game, then look at what Silverwood uh, put on Twitter a, a bit back. He's quite vocal, isn't he, on Twitter? Yeah, the, the, uh, the, the, so, there are certainly a lot of there, there are a lot of sort of underlying issues with the wider game that do contribute to this situation. Uh, Louis says, "I'm no fan of James Child, but he had no help from the linesman. Uh, he missed a lot of calls, but he is human. And now for them to drop him down and not come out and public publicly back him is a disgrace. Mm. The only person I've seen." Uh, having his back is Ian Smith. Uh, Jason Pilmore replies to Lewis and says, pointless having them, to be honest. Look at football. The linesmen can't see offside. Uh, yet the, the RL linesmen they are, can't see nothing and it's two but, foot in but front of I think, I think people don't. I think people underestimate the work that the touch judges actually do. Because just because they're not putting the flag up doesn't mean that... Because they're all wired up, aren't they? Yeah. So I, I think... Pe- I think, like, I think what wired me is in... Yeah, phones, I, I, do but, think, I do think touch judges do more work than people realise. Um, they are the ones judging on yeah. the sides. Um, so, you know, yeah, anyway. We're getting a lot... Like, sorry, Jim, no, we're getting no, a lot no, of comments no, here no, today. No, maybe we should just have a referee. <laughs> <haven't> we? <laughs> you we, see, could get Ian, we could get Ian Smith on. I'll yeah, have to get him in. We'll get him in. We'll get Ian Smith on think, on think, Thursday. I think we might have a special guest next week. We're trying to get special guests in, so... Um, yeah. I think we've got one on, on his way next week uh, from the other side of Pennines. Uh, Ian Gallagher says, I don't agree with our comments um, regarding James Charles. There were plenty of cynical and foul play going on during the game that went unpunished. Chris Hill... Had his head guard ripped off in the tackle, for instance. This leads to players getting frustrated and tempers boiling over. But then at the same time, if the referee starts boiling loads of penalties, he gets criticised for giving loads of penalties. Uh, it's, Ian adds, referees uh, do have a tough job, but they need to be more consistent and some refs need to grow up uh, when dealing with cynical or persistent offenders. Let, let's move I, 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 do, I do think persistent offenders... Should yeah, be dealt easy. with. But that's um, what the old team warning thing is about. Anyway, let's move on for referees because we're halfway through and we've still got a million and one things well, to talk about. Okay. Keep, going. Um, Keep going. TV I want to talk about because there's been two big blows to rugby league in the in the past 24 hours. So um, the Catalan's TV coverage is under threat from next season because being sports have withdrawn. Um, we believe... Robert Elston at Super League has asked for more money from being sports and they've decided that it's not worth it and they're not happy with their viewing figures. I think some of the, our correspondents in France say it costs about €20,000 to do a Catalan game. So Sky, of course, take their feed. So without any French TV coverage, it won't be on Sky. Huge blow. And then Toronto come out last night and said that they've basically pulled their money out of their production TV production. So their home game against York this weekend and the home game against Lee next month won't be televised, neither will Halifax at home, Barrow at home and was it Feathers? Rochdale. Oh, Rochdale at home, they'd already been announced. So, um, interesting times because we're, we're always told that the benefit of having these overseas teams is because it brings broadcast deals and commercial mm. deals and, and blah, 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 blah. But evidently that, that isn't looking like the case because, you know, Catalan, what, what are we, 14, 15 years of Catalan and their TV company are deciding that it's not worth the money. Well, 
we'll, we'll talk about the Catalan situation first. Uh, with the, the Catalan's TV deal, I think this proves more than ever that we need another French team, i.e. Toulouse, uh, in Super League. Mm -hmm. um, because you could have Catalans at home one week, Toulouse at home the following week. So each week in France, there'll be a rugby league game, or a Super League game, in fact, uh, live on Sky Sports, live on... It's, wor it's worth noting as well, it may just be posturing, you know, there, there might be a deal to be had somewhere. There are obviously alternative channels as well. Um, I'm just I'm just concerned a little bit that, about whether our Super League caught up in this delusion of grandeur. Um, you know, do they think that it's bigger and worth more than it actually is? Um, who knows? Uh, I don't... It, 20 thousand pounds seems a lot, doesn't it? To, to broadcast one game, mm. um, which is it's quite alarming that to be fair because I didn't I didn't really expect it to to be that much. I'd like to see what the, the views uh, are yeah. like for for Sky Sports game on a Saturday night. Uh, Catalans wanting to. But don't forget, it's not the it's not the Sky Sports, is it? It's yeah, the, yeah, it's, it's who in France. It's sports, who in France yeah, is yeah. watching it. But um, I like, like to because obviously Sky must. Um, have a payment towards being sports. Well, I, and that's well, I think that's one of the tricky things because you're seeing this a lot in sport now, where the likes of Sky and the likes of BT, they aren't actually paying a great deal for the rights because you know NBA is a good example. So the NBA is on Sky, and Sky don't pay a penny for that because it's distributed to them because the people who own the rights see the value in it being on yeah. Sky. If you know what I mean. Um, so interesting what happens. But what about the Toronto thing? I mean, Toronto obviously we start the season saying every game is going to be on home and away. I think. They've now gone to about what? What are they going to have? Had eighteen, nineteen games out of the twenty-seven. 27 yeah. we're, on, we're on Sky. Um, is this a sign that maybe Toronto are getting a little bit fed up of paying out for things? Yeah, I, I, th I think it is. I, I think obviously they're running. They're, they're not running low on money, but they're, they're obviously losing money. Um, well, I mean that goes each, without and every, each and every week, but they're obviously unhappy with how much money they are. Because uh, I suppose they didn't, they didn't expect to have this this season, did they? Let's be no, honest. They no, expected to be in Super League. Yeah, they expected um, to be in Super League, but I also think that they should have stuck to their word and obviously took the hit and, and played it out to the rest of the season yeah, on Sky Sports. Right. And then right. obviously next season they, they didn't they yeah, do make a, Yeah, a, a, I think I think it, it probably next season, it, but. This season it should have been from now until the end of the season because it just it it looks poor, like it's, yeah, it's, it's slightly poor, unprofessional. Yeah, it? It, is, it is poor form to say, yeah, we're going to show every game and then to got a, not. We've got some more comments here. We've got Jason adding that Toronto are running out of money and, uh, and are scared that the teams that are going to Canada are going to turn them over. Uh, they've won a couple of games by narrow margins lately. I mean, the thing with the Toronto games is the majority of the games... A, a, a fairly boring to watch in my opinion because they're quite one-sided but there are some you know you do get some some decent games the, the out of Toronto game on, on the weekend yeah. also yeah. very good I, but uh, Ian Nicholson just touching on going back to the rest but it's, I think it's fair to mention refer, referees are uh, too familiar with the players they should address the players by the numbers and not the name of the team captain should be the only player that should talk or challenge the I think it's difficult that all, because there's all only, fans want is more consistency I think it's there. difficult all that because there's only 12 teams isn't there yeah. and I mean you know you're refereeing at least one game a week you're either you know and a lot of the refs run the line in other games as well you've got the video refs I think it's a bit it's not like say Premier League where there's 20 teams and Matthew Morrison, all, uh, going back to the TV deal as well, he says Sky will have to get themselves to France and broadcast it. Uh, Sky charge customers enough. Yeah, well, that's that's the other thing because obviously Sky. Sorry, I can't search. Oh! Siri. Siri, Siri wants us broadcast Sky, it. Sky, Sky. The thing with Sky is, obviously, at the start of this season, they did this big PR saying we're going to show more rugby league than ever before. Now, if you lose the Catalan, what, what, how many home games the Catalan have? 13, 14, yeah. 15? Yeah. That's going to be dropped out of their numbers. Mm. So it'd be interesting to see, well, what do they do? Is it, you know, do they fill that gap with championship games? Um, no, again, you don't know what's going to happen with Toronto. We don't know what's going to happen with Toronto if they get promoted, what's going to happen with the TV there. My opinion of it is, is that everyone talks about this broadcast deal, broadcast deal, broadcast deal, and commercial strength for Toronto. There must be a TV production company in Toronto that would do it. Yeah. Sure. sure yeah. But, you know, I, I, well, I they're tweet, already, I tweet they're this... They're in Toronto, aren't they? They're, they're already... They show the well, no, but, no, but that's the show... No, but, they, no, but that's, the, that's the... If it's not on Sky, it's not on Canadian yeah. TV. Because 
the same production company feed goes out mm. to them all. So these games now, you won't be able yeah, to watch yeah. them anywhere. Now, I was watching cricket from Canada the other night, Toronto Nationals against Montreal Tigers on free sports. You know, that was filmed by from a Canadian stadium by a Canadian production company. And, and it just worries me slightly that we've been built up about this, oh, well, Toronto are going to bring in millions and millions and millions and... You know, and, we're, and I, I'm, I'm quite critical of this. I think everyone talks about it hypothetically. There's no real evidence that it's going to happen. And I think unless we see something happen when they get into Super League, you've got to be very, you've got to question what's, what's going on. I mentioned you, you that. Just, cri- you just thought. No, uh, I, men- so I mentioned that. Yeah. I mentioned that cricket thing because I think that is a great example of how it should be done. So um, there's a there's a global T20 going on in Canada at the moment. There's six, um, six or eight teams, and it's a nice mix of ca- Canadian based players and international test or one day players who are playing together played all the games in Canada it's a league of Canadian clubs surely that's got to be the best model for a Toronto moving forward is that if they all go into one league and try and lure some players over there but play it over there because I just don't see at, at the moment we're all, we're having, it almost feels like there's holes in the Toronto thing all the time because of stuff like this but anyway, that's probably a debate. For I know, I know what you're saying there about the Canadian players and they should have Canadian players, but um, if you look over in Australia at Melbourne Storm, it took them 20 years to but, get the first... I understand uh, that, but Melbourne, players, Melbourne's right? in the same country. Whereas, surely the, to grow in Canada, you need to have a number of teams in there. And I think, like I say, I think, I think cricket, the way cricket has expanded over the past 10 years, I think is a very good example of how you should do it. You know, you, you could have a shorter league in Canada... You know, get players going over, blah de blah. Anyway, that's another debate. Let's. Anyway, rugby league, Brian Cricket. We've got some yeah. more comments. Uh, <laughs> Kev Gino Grinelli uh, says Toronto are learning the aspects of losing cash, and if they do make the Super League, then they will financially struggle to manage with the price cap that we have and the expenditure of all the travelling players, and they have to base the plant at home of home games being in Canada, so they are going to struggle. Uh, Michelle Bell uh, also has thanks for the comments by the way keep them flowing we'll try and answer them and engage with them as best we can uh, Michelle says hope Channel 4 get to show more championship games uh, we we understand uh, here at Liverpool League that it's a long way off don't there's we? no there's no championship TV deal on the table at the moment it's very yeah uh, I mean, Sky have got the rights next week. Discussions anyway. did did occur with with Channel yeah. Four. Sky have got the rights anyway, haven't they? Yeah, it's it's nowhere near um, being done, and uh, w- well, it's it's probably relevant to plug our Throwback Thursday uh, this morning. Because yeah, you get on the site Throwback Thursday Rugby League Raw. J- James Wolf's going through the archives. Yeah, we'll so we was watching him the other day uh, in the office, and we thought, why not? Why national not National League. It ran from about two thousand to about two thousand six. National League. Playoffs, uh, behind the scenes, dressing room footage, speaking with coaches, action highlights, great. Um, stopped because Sky took the championship rights and started showing live games, and obviously they don't do that anymore. So, um, let, let, let's. <laughs> De- Devin Taylor on. says, Is Toronto's grown up to Super League standard? If not, where are they going to play? When will their home yeah. season start? It wasn't when the. Dep- uh, is it all. Well, yeah, they, they can't. They, they literally can't. They literally early season, it's yeah, booked they, by others. They can, no, it's weather dependent. They can't. They literally can't play before like April, May, yeah, because until it's May, because it's freezing. that cold. It's, yeah, it's absolutely um, freezing. The, gra- the ground. It's the ground, ground. I, the ground doesn't look great on TV, but I think it, I think it will yeah. be up to standard. Yeah. It, it looks weird because it just looks like it's a load of terracing, but there are yeah. actually seats. They just don't have backs on. Um, and the thing is, it it'd be quite weird if it wasn't up to standard when we've got Bellevue and the Menor's Jungle <laughs> yeah. uh, in, yeah. in Super League. <laughs> Jason says, if my team uh, Featherston don't get promoted, then I want uh, Toronto out of the championship to, uh, out of the championship, so the Super League teams can see what stuff other teams have to put up with. Yeah. Uh, he did put a, a, a little swear word what I mentioned before, but I won't <laughs> mention it now. Uh, they will definitely struggle if they get promoted, and so will we I, if the chance I think, was given I think, to us. I think, Toronto, I think Toronto would struggle, partly because I just don't see how they're going to create the cap room to yeah. be able to sign enough players to compete. Because Ricky Lattell is on a, on a it, big it, sum of you know, what, what We think that they're spending up to the salary cap now. Yeah. The salary cap is super exactly the same. Okay, they might bring in a couple more marquee players, which gives them a little bit more room. But you know what? You know what? That the team that they've got now is would would be in the bottom four, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it certainly, certainly will. Fred Parkinson's watching with us. We missed Dave, Fred. 
We miss Dan being here. Uh, he's too busy for us now. He's got a new job at, through the week and he's on our league duties on the weekend as well. We, so have, we have got something that. Uh, that Dave has asked us to mention. We might as well chuck it in now. Devon Sharks, um, down there in, well, in Devon, in the deep southwest. They beat Tarka Storm 38 10 um, in their grand final last week. It's Devon Sharks' his fourth title, the first is 2013, and they now proceed to the Harry Jepsen Trophy knockout stages where I believe they're playing Somerset Vikings. So M62 Sport, but down in Devon. Cracking. One for the um, expansion is out there. Um, let's, let's move on then from... Let, let's talk. Uh, let's, let's try and go through a few signs then. What do we know? What do we know? Well, if, if you're just tuning in now, Keegan Hurst has gone to Halifax, Adam Tangata's uh, gone to Wakefield on loan. Wakefield have um, also brought in... Morgan Escure and Chris Green. Good signs, I think, for Trinity. Uh, Escure yeah. and, and Green, particularly Green, I think uh, they're, they're missing some firepower, aren't they, in the pack at the moment. They're doing it tough with injuries, and I think Green will, will just give him that little they, bit of strength. They've recalled Lee Kershaw as well. For, from his loan at Oldham. Um, Wigan, uh, Bevan French is set for his debut. I know it's not signing, but well, he's a new signing. He's set for his debut on Friday. Carl Trout is obviously. Join Hawkingston Rovers and the big one, one. Uh, with immediate effect from Dewsbury. He's going to make his debut on Friday night. Oh, full actually, last night, uh, Satai. Sat- is that right? Yeah, Chris Satai. Well, he's, he's known as Chris, but his real name's Tavita. Um, big Tongan. Uh, he comes answer. in with immediate effect as well, yeah, which is they, interesting. They are going to have a big team, aren't they? They are yeah. going to have a big team. But next you year. look a whole team next year. Mate Fanua is arriving. Mm-hmm. The Tongan Terminator, Manu Mao. Uh, another Tongan powerhouse in, in a satire as well who, who comes over uh, and obviously they've, they've got the likes of Ratu Nalago, um, what Josh about, Griffin, so they're going to have a, a big team. Aren't what they? about um, Matty Smith then? So Matty Smith, short term deal at Warrington. Um, do we think Blake Austin, now do we think his injury is worse than what's being let on? I think it is. Uh, apparently, the the buy, uh, Warrington are buying um, one of them chambers uh, that helps with the recovery. Oh, crypto, crypto, crypto. Yeah, it's oh, something. It's it's yeah, a long word, isn't it? And yeah, it's yeah. all right. I'm not and even going like, to try and like, pronounce is it. Is it like really hot or yeah, really no, cold? No, really cold. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's meant to be. Is it like minus one hundred and twenty? Yeah, 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 for a couple yeah, of minutes yeah. or something. Uh, so I think Warrington are buying one of them. Uh, so I've heard for for Blake Austin so we can hopefully uh, my, recover my, ahead of schedule ahead of the My impression final. is there's no chance he'll be at the final. Yeah, I, I don't, and, and, I, I you're don't almost think, you're yeah, almost thinking is he gonna make it back at all? Um I, if Sam Matty Smith now I have it's interesting because they've obviously they've not got rid of anyone. So you know they have the dispensation for Kevin Brown. It, I wonder if Matty Smith may, are they writing off Kevin Brown and saying he's not gonna get back? And and Matty Smith's maybe taking that space on the yeah, it, it, they've already said that they not they don't expect Brown to play again in twenty nineteen. Well, that that wasn't the case a few weeks ago, though, was it? Because he was training, yeah. he'd come back to training, and you know, and certainly at the Challenge Cup semi final press conference, he was asked whether he'd be playing it. You know, in in this but, week. So. But at this stage of the season, and obviously, you, you probably need three or four games to to even get back to one hundred percent match fitness. So I think. I think what, Kevin what, Brown won't play for for Warrington this year. What's the, what is it with Matty Smith? Because I mean, he, he's won Super League. Hyperbaric, twice. is that it? Where? Hyperbaric chamber. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Dave Taylor just said hyperbaric. Um, that, what, back, what is it with Matty Smith? He, he's he's won two grand finals. He's won the Lance Todd Trophy. He, you know, he was part of a very good Wigan team, and then Saint Helen signed him on a big deal. Barely played him. Got rid of him. Catalan have signed him on a big deal. Barely, well, he's not he's not been a regular, has he? And now they've got rid of him. What you know? He's, he's in theory in the peak of his powers, the peak of his career. What what's gone wrong? No, he was, was in the peak of his career when he was at Wigan, I think. No, I know, but I, I don't think no, he was what, in the peak before he went to Catholic. No, no, I understand that. But what I mean is, he's at, he, the the fall from grace from when he's left Wigan yeah. to basically being cast aside by it's, Saints, cast aside by Catalan. I think what? it's it's all, it's all about the the person you play with in the halves. Uh, Matty Smith, uh, his best season. From what I can remember to date, was in twenty sixteen, and that was the season before he joined yeah, yeah. Saint Helens. That's and, what and, I mean. It, it was absolutely electric with George Williams, and George Williams was only young back then. Mm. Um, I think he'd just been awarded the number six shirt, or it might have been the season before. And George Williams, George Williams was fantastic alongside Matty Smith, and they bounced off each other. 
but since he, he went to Saints, and it, Saints was a bit unsettled, were not he, he? His face never fitted Saints, did it? From, mm. from the moment he arrived, he had a, he had a couple of games uh, as soon as he arrived, but then uh, he, he was out of favour uh, by Danny Richardson coming in. Um, and then when, he, when he's gone to Catalan, I just don't think Catalan was a good fit for him because because of the players around him. I, I just don't well, yeah, think I mean, the problem Catalan, so many languages Catalan, just don't work, do they? Catalan would have kept Drinkwater, wouldn't they, yeah. if they hadn't signed him? Yeah. And then obviously because they had Gijo and Tompkins, they got to try and fit them all in. And, and obviously they're having they almost, they almost, the they almost recruited blind, didn't they? It's almost like oh yeah. oh we got Gideon, we signed that yeah. player when that's it. We didn't we didn't yeah. we didn't need him. A bit like. In my opinion, a bit like Leeds with Waller here. Yeah, I, do you know I, what I, mean? I, I completely agree. Um, to be fair, um, do I think it's a good signing for Warrington? I I can see it going completely one or two ways. It could be a disaster of a signing, where it just doesn't work out for him whatsoever, or it could be an absolute master stroke of a signing by Steve Price, and he could guide them to the grand final. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could potentially win them. Uh, the Challenge Cup obviously is a Lance Todd winner he's won Grand Finals he's won Challenge Cups with uh, Wigan uh, so it could be I don't think there'll be a balance I don't think it'll be an average sign I'll either be a, a, yeah, a really poor nice. signing or a massive it, stroke it's an interesting time for Warrington because they've gone from having second place nailed to now all of a sudden you're looking at you know certainly Wigan have got the tails up a little bit the teams behind them are really breathing down the neck and whereas maybe a few weeks ago you thought Warrington could Ease into the to the cup final and then have a few weeks just to you know get the, you know bring the Matty Smith in and get him ready for the playoffs. Warrington are actually going to have to start winning games to make sure that they finish in the play. Well, I mean, I don't no, think they're, they're not to finish in the playoffs, but to finish second or third or fourth, you know, yeah. to finish as high up as yeah. possible because you don't want to be finishing lower than third. Yeah, I mean, I, even even for Warrington, I think from where they've been this season. Finishing third for Warrington would be a disaster. Yeah. But unless they're very careful, that could happen. You know, yeah, they, lose, they lose tonight, they play Wigan next week. Yeah, they play Wigan next week. If they if Warrington lose the week before Wembley, so they're if, not gonna play anyone. If, if Warrington lose tonight and they lose yeah. to Wigan next week and Wigan win this week and next week, Wigan have got the same points as them, aren't they? Hull are only two behind. I mean they've been lucky that Hull have had a few losses, a few narrow losses, yeah. because otherwise Hull would have gone past them. Um, let's have a look at the weekend then. So we mentioned it already tonight. Warrington versus St. Helens is the Sky game. Um, oh, um, we've, got, we've got a few comments. Go on. <laughs> um, Jason Pimble says, going back to the Devon Shark story, Devon Shark should be given a place they've tried so many times and been rejected, yet West Wales have won one game in two years. Why not give them a go in League One? Mm-hmm. I, won't I, won't fancy the, I won't fancy going from Newcastle to Devon, though. No, but, <laughs> hey, Newcastle will be, be in championship next year. They won't have to make that trip. Right, anyway. uh, but, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind a trip to Devon. Yeah, get some yeah, fish yeah. and chips. And well, I mean, it makes more sense, doesn't it? Anyway, um, to Warrington Saints tonight, um, you, you've fabled loop fixture because I remember going to Warrington Saints many weeks ago when it was a... It was the big clash, wasn't it? When Warrington... When, actually, you were looking at if Warrington won... They'd start. They'd have reeled in Saints a little bit, whereas obviously Saints have just kicked on since yep. that since that game. Um, so that's tonight's Super League game. I, th- I think I think Saints Saint Saints Saints have, have named a pretty good, strong team. Obviously, James Roby, I think, is the only name missing of not all oh, on Lachlan Coop, but Lachlan Coop's not played for a couple of weeks. Two two um, two big games tomorrow night. Saints Leeds Leeds Catalan is that the Sky game? Leeds Catalan. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, Leeds um, Catalan uh, heading late. I I, th- I think. Leeds in this if one. Leeds, if Leeds win, are they safe? Yeah, no. I think, I think there's another Because if they win, yet. that gets them to 20. Yeah, we, think, we've been having this debate whether 20 points would be enough. No. And it's, but, it, but it boxes up every week, doesn't it? But, but I think it... I don't know. Maybe like 70% safe. I think there's still a little chance, isn't there? But a I think, massive yeah. win for them last week. Yeah. Real momentum Huge as well. Huge win. Um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go for Leeds in, in that one. Obviously, Mickey McElhorn and Sam Tompkins are spending mm. for, for Catalans and... Obviously, they're a little bit disrupted out um, at the moment. The, I think the other game tomorrow night is Wigan OKR. Of course, Wigan won by uh, Sam Powell, drop goal in the reverse fixture. But OKR never seem to travel to Wigan very well, do they? Don't no, think? no, they don't. Uh, I think uh, it's a tough one this because obviously OKR are fighting for the lives. Mm. Uh, we, we thought Castleford would have beat OKR last week. Well, certainly I did. Mm. And obviously Hulkar upset the odds, but I just think we're going to too strong at the moment. I'm bitter it's... about that, because I had Hulkar by one last week against Casper, so I predicted it. But in our media tipping league, they count the result after eight minutes, which is absolute disgrace in my opinion. <laughs> um, 
Um, trying to get that in. Um, so, and it, it, it will be good to, to see um, Ben Flower back out on the field. Joe Greenwood uh, also returns. Uh, for Wigan as well. Saturday, is this on Sky? Casper London? Is no. it Sky? No? Why are they playing Saturday? No! Is it because they're Cas- on Sky next time? because it's Leeds... Uh... Cas like a few Saturday games, don't Anyway, Cas- Casper London, tough, tough. London are in a bit of a hole now, aren't they? Um, they built a bit of a... They basically breathed life into the relegation battle by winning... Did they win four out of five or something like that? But they've suffered a couple of... A couple of defeats that may well have knocked them and Casper away isn't a game that you necessarily want. Um, to be bouncing back from is it damage limitation for them do they just need to for me London have just got to make sure that they're only two points behind when they get to that, the last three games because mm. it's in their hands yeah. if, if, you're, if you're two points behind someone with them three games left at least then they can give themselves well, a we've got, we've got, we've got a few comments here I think, I think it's can we, let's get through the games do, first, do, whoa, 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 whoa Dave Taylor says off the fence through what's he saying I'm on the fence for here huh eh? What's well, cracky, Dave? On the fence. I don't know what I'm no, on the fence about. Forget that for now. So, Casper London on Saturday. Sunday is Salford Huddersfield. Salford going really well. Um, a win for them, a, you know, real good game for them. A win for them at home for Huddersfield this week really gets them yeah. top five. I, I think that, that's massive for both teams. Well, yeah, that, that, that Huddersfield gets, need a response I, I, from last I, week. Yeah, they've got to have a and, response. And it was, um, did Huddersfield, Huddersfield beat Salford on Sky, didn't they? Uh, not, yeah, not so long ago, yeah. so there might be a little bit of a revenge mission there as well. I think, and then I think so for that one. Big big game at Bellevue is Wakefield take on Hull. Um, you're never quite sure with Hull, are you? Um, and Wakefield is struggling. Chris Green can make his debut against. Uh, he can't. Hull. He's not allowed. Uh, oh no, he's play. not. But uh, Morgan Escrow can play for Wakefield mm, against Morgan. Yeah. That so, was it. I got um, but, um, so so I was at the bottom of the table. Lon- Hull. Lon- London have got 16, and then all the other four. So that's. Wakefield, Hull, KI, Huddersfield and Leeds have all got 18. Um, do we, are we thinking maybe only Leeds will win out of them five this week? Because uh, Hull, KI are at Wigan, Huddersfield are at Salford, Wakefield are at home to Hull. Yeah. yeah. And so that would be, a big, it'd be yeah. a big boost for Leeds, wouldn't it? Um, looking at the top five then, so um, it's really tightened up a little bit. Um, Casper Blues in last week's... Knock them a little bit. Warrington have 30, Hull have 28, Wigan have 26, Catalan have 26, Salford have 24, Casford have 24. Salford have got the best points difference actually out of all them bar Warrington. So if Salford win this week, they'll really have. I mean, they're six at the moment, but you'd imagine think, they'll get in the top five. Do you, do you think they can get that top five? Salford? Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting because we, I think we said, did we say, was it last week or week before? We thought the five it was then, which, off from memory, was Saints, Warrington, Hull, Wigan, and Cass. I think that was what we were saying was going to be the yeah. five. Um, I, I think Cass will make it. You I, still I, think Cass will make yeah, it? Yeah, I, I don't think um, Salford will. Are, are, are you thinking Hull and Wigan are there? Hull and Wigan yeah. will make it? Uh, then, I think the top think, four is it is. And, I think and then it's one Cass, of Cattle Cass, and Salford. Yeah, and I think Cass will get it. Interesting. Um, championship. Um, there is a championship. There are championship games on Saturday. Witness are playing Toulouse. That's on the Our League app. Um, Toronto playing York, which isn't on anywhere. Um, that's a first v second in championship as well. Um, interesting one really for York because um, you know a bit of a ball eight to go over to Canada at this stage of the season, especially when they could potentially have to go back twice later on in the season. But it'd be interesting to see how York compete because we've seen last few weeks mentioned the Bradford game before. Witness competed with Toronto real well. Featherston, I thought, played really well against Toronto. Um, it's there's sort of signs there that they are beatable, and as much as no one's done it yet, it'd be interesting yeah. to see how York do there. And there's also a League One game on Saturday as well, Keithley against Hunslet. We'll have a look at the tables in a minute. Um, also in Championship on Sunday, Barrow desperately need a win in their fight for relegation. They're at home to Bradford, who are sort of tumbling out of the playoff race, and they, they, they Bradford without doubt have to win all their games to even have a chance to get in the playoffs. Batley Dewsbury is, is the heavy woolen derby. Um, with a 3 pm kick off there. Featherston against it Swinton. At? It's that badly, that one. Oh, Featherston really? against Swinton. Swinton, really good form. They were unbeaten. They lost by one at Lee last week. Swinton really p- picked up. That's a potential banana skin for Featherston because Featherston needs to keep winning to consolidate their top five. Halifax are at home to Sheffield. Sheffield, like Bradford, um, a bit off the pace with the top five, but their big win over Witness last week gives them a little bit of hope. If Sheffield can get a few wins, there'll be a few teams looking over the shoulder. Uh, Rochdale were relegated. The relegation was confirmed last week. They're at home to Lee. Um, the League One games are North Wales, Coventry, Doncaster, London Scholars, Oldham against Newcastle, and Workington 
against West Wales. Women's Super League Sunday as well. Bradford Saints, Casper Wigan, Leeds, Featherston, Wakefield, York. Uh, Women's Super League news. Leeds versus York was abandoned last week due to an injury to Sophie Robinson. They're not going to replay that match. Um, let's have a look at the tables then quick um, before we go. We've got five minutes or so. Um, championship. Um, let's see then. So top five. York 33. Obviously, forget to honour. York 33. Toulouse 32. Lee 32. Featherston 30, and then you've got Sheffield 26, Bradford 25. They've got, what, four games left? So you, there's only really Featherston that are catchable, isn't yeah. there, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you feel if Featherston win this week, the top five is boxed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the bottom, Barrow are three points adrift of Widnes. So Barrow are going to have to win two of their last four and hope that Widnes lose all four. Um, Witness have got Toulouse at home, um, Lee away. I'm, I'm struggling here. Lee away, <laughs> Dewsbury away. What's he's not going to speak the last five minutes. He wants me to speak now. He's trying to think. Swinton, Swinton at home, you're right. So Witness have got <laughs> Swinton at home, Toulouse at home, and then. So, I mean, Witness could lose all four, but it's just where Barrow are going to pick them two winners. There's a win at Wembley, don't uh, League one table, Whitehaven. Are still top on 26. Newcastle second on 23, but Newcastle do have a game in hand. Um, Oldham also have a game in hand there on 22. Oldham uh, announced this week that Scott Naylor is leaving at the end of the season. You think he's going to go to Salford as assistant? I think so, yeah. Uh, I think he'll stay in the game, won't he? Uh, Scott Naylor. Uh, obviously, Salford have advertised for an assistant coaching role. Well, quite a, a couple of months back now uh, when Martin Gleeson left the club to, to go to Rugby Union. Uh, they've not appointed an assistant yet, and I think. Uh, It'll be sort of an assistant coach next year, and I think he played with uh, Ian Watson as yeah, well, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, uh, yeah. At Salford in the nineties, so. Um, I so yeah, well. so the top three in League One. Don't forget the, the winners go up automatically. So Whitehaven are in that box seat currently. Newcastle second on twenty three. Oldham have got twenty two. Hunslet have got twenty. Doncaster have got eighteen, and Workington have got seventeen. And that's the playoffs. You'd imagine that's they're the favourite. That's mm. what you would assume it finishes at. But London Scholars. Just two points behind Workington on 15. North Wales have probably got too much to do there on 12. Coventry on 8. Keithley on 5. West Wales on 2. Um, let's talk on the subject of Keithley then. Let's talk about this reserves palaver. So um, there's a bit of, obviously, great news that reserves is coming back, but there's been, as is always the case with Rugby League, um, shooting themselves in the foot a little bit. They've rejected an application from Keithley to play in the Reserves Championship next season. I think they've also rejected Whitehaven as well. Um, interesting one, because if Whitehaven get promoted, then why can't they have a team in a Championship? Argue my opinion. My opinion is I just don't see the value in Keithley having a reserve team. That's no disrespect to Keithley. They're in League One. I just don't see the value in a League One team having a reserve team, because I just think you're just taking players that would be playing in the amateur game. Yeah. Um, my thoughts on it... It's similar to yours, I think um, there's not much of a point in them having a reserve team. Um, and, th and, I, and, I, and if I'm being honest, I think some of them reserve players at Keithley would have joined the likes of Castleford Reserves, Wakefield Reserves, I, I, uh, Leeds and, Reserves. And people for, will say, oh, we'll rather develop our own players and bring through our own players. Well, that's what your academy is for, isn't it? It's not what a reserve yeah. is for. Um, but I, I, on the flip side, I also think... If they want to run if, one, if they, they do want to run one, then they should just be able to join the reserves competition. At the end of the day, they've, they've run a reserve team for the last couple of years. Yeah, they've yeah. been one of the only clubs, well, one of the few clubs in the country or, yeah. uh, this year to run a reserve team. And I think, well, if they've got the players there who want to play in the reserves, who want to play for Keithley, then why can't they play in the reserves comp? Fair, fair um, I, I, I do agree with you that I don't see a great, a great point of the Mammy one, but if you've got if the they players there and they want one yeah why, who is it who is it for us or the RFL yeah. to judge whether they should have one or not um, that's it for this week whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, go on. Just, just go through the, the comments from before we've had quite a few uh, David Taylor says haha Drew it was your Matty Smith dilemma <laughs> oh, ok I'll get, off, I'll get off the fence I'll say it could be a shrewd signing for, uh, for the Wolves uh, David Taylor says Eric Perez had um, dreams of America, uh, of Canadian football players uh, coming on this on the stream. Uh, what happened to that? Why is Eric no longer there? Why are they still based in Manchester? <laughs> the, the Emperor has a new suit. Um, Jason says it will be very tricky for us against Swinton uh, this weekend. Fred Parkinson also says Rochdale versus Lee is also the, on the Everleague app. 
Who um, chose that? Who chose that? Oh, Why is no Featherston and Swinton on? Why on earth is Rochdale against Leon? Get Featherston and Swinton on a proper game, a competitive game. Uh, uh, Rochdale, of course, relegated last weekend and, and it confirmed that the will be playing in League One next year. They're the, the putting a, a big emphasis on local lads for 2020. Go and check that out on the loverubbelieve.com website. Dave Parkinson on comms at, at Rochdale versus Lee. Have a good, good mate, Dave. Uh, Jason, with a final comment, the Twitch app uh, is a good thing as well. This is the Ever League app. Uh, enjoyed watching Witness vs. Lee in the 1895 Cup on Switch. Yeah, um, thanks everyone for your comments and for, for watching us here on the Rugby League Lunch Hour here every Thursday, 12 to 1. Also available on demand via our Facebook page, YouTube channel, and on the website as well. Please do keep it loverugbyleague.com and we'll see you next week.